Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off Road Podcast. I'm Big Z, and I'm here with special guest Hubert Rowland, not Rowland. Last time I called you R- Rowland. Rowland, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we are here live at UTV Takeover 2021 in Grundy, Virginia, at the Southern Gap Outdoor Adventure. We're actually on the uh, the patio, the the overlook over here, and we can see, you know, a valley of pretty epic uh, hills and and valleys that you can go ride on the Spearhead Trail System. And uh, if you haven't been up here, um, it's a pretty awesome little trail system. It's it's my first time here. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, as much as I've rode all over the country, I've never rode in Virginia or West Virginia. This is the first time being in Virginia actually riding. Wow! So you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna get an experience because you're going out today. You're gonna take a group of people out for a ride. It's part of your um, kind of get out and ride program you got going on. So kind of give us a rundown of what you got going on. Yeah, I I really just try to go to you know kind of established events. Um, kind of use the name I have to to draw a crowd and let's just go out and ride right you know uh it it's not a big publicity stunt it's it's just no it's like i want to ride yeah. and i want to meet the people that <laughs> that love riding you know right. and if you have questions ask them and if you just want to ride just ride you know yep. it's i think um i we get disconnected from people so often with personalities and brands and I, stuff i don't consider myself a celebrity whatsoever but we were watching the little the little race yesterday yeah this big guy comes up with a, a southern proud shirt on hubert my man <laughs> he's like we are so proud of you and i'm like thanks <laughs> and uh he it's just like got, your family and he he's excited that yeah you i mean like he, he was like the awesome uncle that i never met <laughs> <laughs> like he was just like he was pretty know, ecstatic to him and you. all his buddies they were just they were just so happy to meet me and just so proud of where a small town person has actually gone i all i've done is work like <laughs> right you know, I, I don't consider anything special i am where i am because of just being good to people uh working and trying to do the best i know how to do right and just being open to you know others ideas if it might help and um just treat people how you want to be treated that's right. purely how i got to where i am of course there's also like just being very open and meeting lots of people and um it doesn't hurt to shake hands and <laughs> oh yeah I mean, meet all the people you possibly can um but i'm purely here because of travis and nitro circus right but it was 18 years ago you know i met them just like i would meet you or anybody else you know right. just a friendly person and you know willing to help if they'll give you a chance right and i've worked my way to there and now well, even when you first met them, right? It was in the pits, and you were willing to work on the bikes, and yeah, you were and willing I mean, to do stuff. You know, willing to work with no expecting anything right. back. You know, right. we worked for free for a long time, and and just happy to be there. And uh, I I truly believe that if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life, and uh, it'll always be fun. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So you speaking of work, you were just recently playing with some big toys. Uh, was that like a D a D not a D eleven? Uh, yes. I didn't even know they went up to 11. Yes. I mean, they went full, like, 80s movies on you and, yeah. and cranked her up. Yeah, uh, it was very fortunate. Got called by a stunt coordinator that is a lot of close mutual friends with some of the Nitro Circus guys. And this stunt coordinator, he's also a stunt driver for Fast and the Furious and many other awesome movies. Uh, he said, hey, we got a we got a really cool project. We, uh, it's a lot of off-road stuff. I really like you to, to build it or help oversee building it. He said, this is kind of what you do. And I was like, yeah, no problem. So we went, um, it, it's a video production for Caterpillar. I can't say any more than right, that. Right, right, right. But, you know, very fortunate that I got to go out to the uh, Caterpillar corporate training facility where they have every piece of equipment underneath the sun <laughs> right. that, you, that like a, a big kid like me would just like holy cow like the candy all, store <laughs> yeah all this at my disposal it's like yeah like now now is the dozer like the ultimate like pusher or is it just the that one it was just so big it was fun to be in i mean it's as that's as big as they make the d11 uh the thing is over two hundred thousand pounds right is what it weighs about 850 horsepower and the blade on it is like taller than you 18 feet wide like 20 foot you know not 20 foot tall but probably 10 foot tall yeah i was running a d9 for a few hours just pushing dirt and that thing pulls up next to me and i'm like oh 
<laughs> Why am I not in that? It's not as, <laughs> like a, a nine is a big machine. It's a huge and machine. And then an 11 pulls up and it's like it towers over it. And I'm like, gee whiz. And those machines are made for big mines. Yeah, yeah. Coal mines and, you know, whatever. Big terraforming. Open, yeah. So I doubt it's a daily seller, <laughs> especially at a price tag of $3 million. So, yeah. uh <laughs> Well, with those big mines, $3 million is just the average cost. Yeah, of and I mean, they're, you know... They have it all calculated out. They know m- how many millions they're making every so many days or whatever. Right. So it, it justifies it very fast. Right. Uh, they introduced me to Cat 3D Grade. Oh. Uh, which was pretty next level because I went there for the site walk. And they're like, all right, will you send us your, your files and your jumps and we'll put them in 3D Grade. And I was like, we use a tape measure and, <laughs> and a hammer and There's stakes. no USB port for my brain yeah, here. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that. I was like, most time I get drawings on a napkin from Travis and it's like, yeah. This is what I want. And I'm like, okay, I just, I know how to translate it. So I do use Google SketchUp, which is, you know, a free 3D CAD thing. Yeah. And I've drawn some tracks and jumps and stuff like that. And it's super good to get, to show someone the basic of what it is and kind of calculate a footprint of where it fits. Um, And you could take the time to exactly draw it, you know, the radiuses and everything. But um, it just gets the idea. Right. So I, I sent the, the drawings to them. There's a lot of back and forth. All right, this works. Uh, could we do something different here, here, here? Because on a video production, uh, what most people wouldn't know, you know, on a track, you you build a track to to ride fun, to flow good. You know, some people want big air, some people don't. Whatever. With a video production, it's what does the camera want to see? Right. What's going to be in the shot? It's it's purely like what do you want the vehicle to do? How high do you want it to go? You know, do you want to see the vehicle working, not working, whatever? So with all that in mind, then they come back to me. All right, we want to see this, this, and this. So they draw out some jumps. I send them to them. Well, their earthwork side, which is part of the 3D grade, they convert it and put it on a map. That with is, all the GPS coordinates that is and of the area. Yeah. They go out and they GPS the whole land, and then they just set it on top of it. So I got there, and they they had a, a, a fair portion of the dirt moved. They introduced me to 3D grade right away, right away, and they're like, all right, you go up to here, zoom around on the screen. Here's some some dirt hills we're, we're going to put you on. And um, they're like, you know, you have to be an operator. You have to be able to get the you dirt close. You have to be close. able to move the truck, the, 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 the machinery around. And yeah, get, and, get and, no- and you got to be able to blade the dirt in where it needs to be. But once it gets in with so many tents, you just hit the auto button, and you can watch the screen. It, the blade will drop to auto. Yeah. And no matter what the machine does, the blade is keeping it Perfectly. at that grade. That's crazy. And so, like, being an operator, like like a flat floor, like a football stadium, I could get it pretty close. Pretty darn close. It would take time because right. you got to go back and forth and feel high spots, low spots. Mm-hmm. Get out, that look thing, at it. You can back up, you can hit autos, and it will cut exactly that. That's crazy. So it just – it amplifies the time like tenfold and it's they're really big on um relaxing the operator right because if you're going to be in a machine for 8 10 12 15 hours a day you know it, it doesn't seem hard just sitting there moving joysticks all day it'll wear there's you a out. lot of mental things of like up here down here up here down here and you're just back and forth back and it's forth. that constant stress of of trying and, to navigate yeah and it 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 wears on you. Yeah. You know, at the end of a day of just grading something all day long and no assistance whatsoever and not even grade stakes or someone checking grade. You know. And, and the old days where there was no AC and there was no tinted windows yeah. and there was no airflow and, you yeah. know, all that stuff. No radio or no nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're big on operator comfort. Yeah. Because operator comfort brings efficiency. So, you know, Caterpillar is... is now, the last dozer the top, that I, the top I, I was the game. In pushing stuff around on, and I don't do it a lot, but, like, the last one I was in, the, there was just a hard seat on a hard bench. <laughs> like, yeah. are, are they moving up to, a, like, air ride and stuff now? Or So, nearly every every dozer I got in out there has heated or AC ventilated seat in it. Oh, shoot. You don't know more swamp? No more oh, swamp. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> a cab alone with AC is nice. But then I see the seat and the little blue light on. I was like, no way. I was like, I was kind of waiting for this to happen. Yeah. There it is. And now I'll go back to Pastrana Land and get on our. <laughs> get nine, on the website and start ordering. <laughs> our 94 model D3 that's open cab and be like, 
whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to work on that Caterpillar sponsorship. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, was, it was definitely a, a lot of fun. Everyone there is amazing people. Uh, I shot some ideas around of just what I – you know, kind of see and think of the future. There's a big demand for trade skills in the country. Right. Um, you can't go anywhere without seeing a help wanted sign. Right. And there's a, a big need for trade skills. You know, HVAC, plumbers, electricians, construction, equipment operators, everywhere they need help. Right. And I'd, I would love to figure out a way to work with Caterpillar and other companies as far as just raise awareness. Right. And especially younger generations or anybody watching or listening, you know, whether you're in a current job and not happy and you want to find something new or you're younger and you know kind of looking at jobs and careers uh definitely look into trades you can go into it uh learn a lot it's hands-on it's very rewarding like for me like dirt work you go out in a flat field and whether you're cutting ditches or building a track you basically take it from a drawing to your head through the controls and you back up and it's all done it's like molding it out of clay like it's very rewarding and the, the thing that a lot of people don't realize that about trade work is that there's a real um tangible benefit to being done at the end of the day oh for sure like i come from the it industry and stuff where like your prod your projects just never ever oh, end yeah and no matter how much work and how many hours you put in overnight like you work a 20 hour day yep. no matter what you do it's never going to be done and you're in, in the stress level that goes with that is horrible yeah and at the end of the day of a tradesman right like the work done and yeah. you go home yeah when the, when the job's done okay we go clock in on another job you know it's right. kind of like a reset yep every time and the every job job's ends. a little bit different so yeah there's always a little bit of variance uh you can go through trade schools and stuff like that and you can come out far faster far less debt right and be financially ahead far faster than most that would take a, a longer college path and if you get into like most uh local businesses and stuff you can get an apprenticeship like started before you even get into school oh, and already sure. be halfway there for sure and that way when you go to school you're already making money paying off the bills and by yeah. the time you get out of college you're certified you're paid off and you're making money yeah and so you know that's a message i want to get across but the second half of that message is all the current people do, that are doing the trades operators stuff like that need to back down and be more welcoming to new people because <laughs> i get and it new, and new lifestyles yes, and new personalities i, I and get it you're good at what you do i mean that's <laughs> awesome and i'm i'm pumped for you there's operators that are probably 10 times better than me but if there's a newcomer that wants to come in and learn be willing to help them learn right because you're going to want to retire one day yeah and someone's going to have to take your place they're not trying to take your place right out of the gate by no means but they want to learn they want to be as good as you right so share the knowledge you know i mean help help each other out that's all i mean that's life just help each other out if the whole country would help each other out we'd be in a lot better place yeah if we were just be good and do good you know and treat people how you want to be treated and you know that's that's simple <laughs> it's simple simple but it's very hard when your ego is bigger than your brain yeah yeah well and we, there's a lot of us out there <laughs> <laughs> we're all guilty of it at times that, that's all that's really all there is to it um but it is what it is so how's uh how's life with the uh, pastrana land and nitro circus going and all that i know travis has has been doing a lot of the rally car stuff recently and, yeah. and with subaru and all that um what what's the environment at, at pastrana land and what's going on what do you guys got on the books well, uh, Pastrana Land is, you know, it is what it is. It's a shop with property and bikes and everything are there. And I maintain it and kind of keep it up and running. And You guys just did a pit, uh, like a, the third series of a, a pit bike race over there. We did you? that. That was, uh, we filmed that back in May. Okay. And, you know, with filming that kind of stuff, it's very quiet. Yeah. Because it, it can't get out before it's out. <laughs> right. Um, you know, we, we talk, you know, we're going to have pit bike races it's it's very closed you know teams are set invited stuff like that locations are set and then you know i fully built the track at pastrana land with the uh, help of zach and a couple really really good local friends uh we had a round at kevin windham's house in mississippi so him and his guys built that and then ryan ryan sipes house in kentucky so him and his brother built that so it was three races three locations in 10 days um oh it was in 10 days yeah i didn't realize that and then it's filmed in 10 days and the biggest reason they do that is nitro is a production company along with stunts and all that kind of stuff so on a production side of it 
you're you're bringing in these camera operators. You're hiring a whole team around the whole concept. So you you try to limit how long right. that you have to pay them. Um, and they they're not that they're being cheap. No, but no, just to be an efficient company. It's not. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's all about efficiency. Like these a camera operator and his equipment. You know they they pay the guy and they rent his equipment. I mean it's expensive. Yeah, it's extremely expensive. So. They limit it out to 10 days, and most of all those kind of people are private contractors. They're job per job. They know what they're getting into. And you also and want to keep them the same people site to site so that it looks the same oh, and, of course. and all that. And you want the same people running everything because they all have the vision that goes across. Right. So it, it, it works very well, but that's they cram it in 10 days and partly scheduling. Like some riders were riding pro nationals. Some riders were doing other things, and you got camera people in production and you have to move everything so it's easier just to keep it cluttered up and move it all and then we're done right. instead of do it and then try to regather everybody a couple weeks later it, it just makes it very hard prep is the the thing that takes the longest yeah they uh they spend a lot of time scheduling and all this kind of stuff because you had so many personalities and different angles that yeah. to bring people in on and, and the, the schedules alone like travis's schedule is is very booked um, because everybody asked me, what is he, what, what is he doing? What's he doing? I was like, well, rally is number one. He's Subaru's number one driver in America. Oh, okay. For American rally, which is stage rally, which is gravel roads through the woods. Each stage is roughly eight to 15 miles and you're racing the clock. Right. So it's start point, go. Whoever does it the fastest wins that, that stage, you move on. And there'll be anywhere from 10 to 15 stages in a weekend. But they'll cram them in two days. So he's at a rally right now in the Northeast. Last I looked uh, last night, he was running fourth in times. He was 19 seconds behind the leader. Holy cow. And he's fourth. So <laughs> the top five is within a 30-second right. time frame. Right. Uh, that's insane. And the top two were within, like, a second and a half. Yeah. So they're all just spot on, right. amazing drivers. It's basically whoever makes the first mistake. Yeah. <laughs> that's really Who, what it is. Wh whoever flinches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that that's what he's doing. But then he's also a large part of Nitro Rally Cross. Right. Which is, it's, I think, like 20% pavement. The rest of it's dirt. And we're setting them up at different current off-road tracks, like okay. ERX. Okay. There'll be one there. Uh, I'm really pushing them to have a UTV Pro class. That'd be just fun. Just one. That'd be fun. Uh, just to kind of break it up. Yep. And I think it'll be kind of an invite, maybe qualifier weekend before, because this is a live show. We have his class, which is supercars. Those cars, there's only 10 of those cars in the world. <laughs> uh, right. They're probably pushing about half a million apiece. Yeah. Um, Four-cylinder Subaru pushing seven, eight hundred horsepower, something like that. So all you kids out there with little Subaru bangers and realizing that they could be a half million dollar car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think you're spending a lot now? <laughs> no, no. But they have supercar class, and then they have the lights class, which oh, okay. is more of a spec car. Right. They're all the same. Where the supercars, they they are all off of base guidelines, but they are different manufacturers and stuff. Right. And they're truly race built. Like you'll take a Subaru, they'll pull it apart. It's a shell. Then they'll cage it. Then they'll brace it, and then they'll basically put it all back together. Right. The whole thing's based around the frame. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, Nitro Rally Cross starts September 25 weekend. So it'll go. That's at Utah. Okay. That track's already there because they've raced there two years in a row, and they leave the track because they don't need to move it gotcha. like the facility doesn't. And that's at the Utah Motorsports Complex right outside of Salt Lake. So that's September 25 weekend. October 2nd weekend is the RX, the following weekend. And they're back-to-back, -back, which makes it hard for us that are helping with track. Right. right. Um, but those tracks are already there. So it's mostly just prep it, you know, get dust control and all that kind of stuff. ERX people, Andy and those guys up there are unreal. They've already built the track. It was a Pro 4, Pro 2 track. Oh, okay. And all they did was make the landings longer. Yeah. You know, just more forgiving for a car. A little flatter for the car, yeah. And so he's uh, Travis went out there and tested that with the Subaru team uh, just to make sure the track can get to where they needed it to get to. And then do some car testing also to see what's going on. So that's back-to-back -back weekends. Now, do you have to leave, like, from the event early to go handle the other one? Or do you kind of have the ability to just complete the entire thing and then jump out and go? On... 
on those two since the track's already there basically probably fly sunday night arrive monday morning start working on erx as far as getting compaction dust control stuff like that and then there's i think november time frame is uh wild horse pass in arizona okay where's that out of uh it's just south of phoenix okay yep and that track is currently closed it was a pro 2 pro 4 track but we'll change it we'll use what's there but change some things right for rally cross then from the schedule i believe the following weekend it goes to glen helen okay which they'll they'll edit and change that pro 2 pro 4 track and then the last round is at the firm in florida in december uh, and that's it kind of you kind of edit for the cars, but right. it's already there So when you go to an established track right and they put a t- ton of money and time into making these things what they want it to be Right and lots of input over the races people say change that do this and then you come in and in and, and totally Reshape half the track or whatever the case is Do you take like notes of like how it was before and then have to put it back or what's the process there of? Yeah. of transforming a track. I yeah, mean how we, often are they doing that in the first place? Yeah, like the Pro 2 Pro 4 tracks, they, they kind of are what they are. They'll change things here and there to make it the best racing, the best flow they possibly can. And then we come in there and, yeah. I mean, Screw it all up. and then <laughs> Screw it all up. Take away all their compaction and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But we do put it back to where it was. Okay. Um, as far as, like, we can't roll it in and get it as hard as it was, but it'll be all the same shapes, and then it just takes time to, to get it all slicked off where they wanted it. So, yeah, we, all, we always put it back. Um, I work with one guy that has a big contract with some some live shows, and they do they actually do like turf and football fields. Oh, right. This guy does. So they'll have the contract to come in and pull up all the turf, and they'll take a loader in there, and they'll skim it right off, throw it in dump trucks, and then the next company will lay it all down. And some of these sites, uh, their specialty is they they bring in everything, put on a big show like they did stuff for the Super Bowl. Okay. And um, when they leave, it's like it was never there. Right. That's literally what they're good at. So that's part of what we do is make gotcha. it make it look like we were never there. So when you like what we should be doing on the trails, like <laughs> with our trash. That's right. Make it look like you were never there. Like a little bit of dust, a little bit of tracks is fine, but pick up your bottles and your cans. Oh, good lord! And if you're going to be stunting or climbing or rolling or whatever, just think about what's in your car. I, I actually saw one of the guys over there that did his little cartwheel on the jump race yesterday. He had I, a, he I had went a whole over, buffet of things on the ground. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I went and picked up all his Coca-Colas and put them back in his cooler and they, they come off the track and uh, about an hour or so later he was back over there at his, his machine and it was kind of tweaked up a little bit and he kind of looked kind of down. I was like, man, it, it's mostly cosmetic. Yeah. I was like, if you take it apart, put it back together, it'll be pretty darn good. I said, most people are always looking at an aftermarket cage anyways just because of styling. He's like, you know, actually, I was just thinking about getting a oh, cage. Maybe, maybe and, we should have uh, done that before you went on a so, rally course. <laughs> so he, he, he was okay with that, but I, I saw him just chuck two Coke bottles on the ground. Oh, man. Like, they were all shook up, and he, I didn't... I didn't really see, but I just saw him fall on the ground, and he just kept on messing with stuff. And he, he kind of looked around, and I said, are you really going to just throw those on the ground? Oh, you straight up called them out. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, because <laughs> I'm thinking that's why people complain. Right. You know, that's that's just the start of it. I just don't understand the mentality of And he was like, oh, it. oh, well, they just fell out of my cooler when I was looking at it. Yeah. I'm like, well, they kind of hooked kind of far. That was, so. a, that was a funny little uh, jaunt they took. Yeah. <laughs> so, But no, that's way. an important message. I mean, we're talking about these trails out here. Like, these trails didn't even exist until they came in and, and reshaped this. This used to be actually uh, a coal mine, okay. right? And they and they and it was completely stripped bare. Mm-hmm. This whole mountainside, this, this used to be a mountainside and then it's no longer a mountain here uh, because they mined it out. Okay. <laughs> so so they, they came in years ago and, and started redeveloping and terraforming and, and planting and, and all that stuff. And then they built this whole trail system that didn't exist, right? Yeah. Like there's a bunch of outlaw trails throughout Virginia and all that oh, yeah. stuff. But there was no official trails. And so they came in and built these trails. They got them, you know, they worked with the state and the local governments and all that to do it. And then, you know, why would we ruin such an amazing resource by just leaving our trash out there? Or if we roll it or whatever and everything falls out, why would we just leave it there? Yeah, I, I, I don't fully understand that. Um, I, I, I watch the pages and stuff like that, the little YouTube pages here and there, and, and, and comment where I can help. Yeah. Um, usually if it's under 10 comments, because if it's over that, it's usually so far off subject. It doesn't matter <laughs> anymore. <get> <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
there was there was a couple on trail a couple recently about Tackett Creek, which is kind of just north of Royal Blue Brimstone area. Okay. And a uh, awesome place. It it's pretty technical riding, like straight up wall climbing up hills and stuff right. like that. And there was there was an issue about gates and um, certain areas and stuff like that. And people had going going around this gate and this and leaving trash and stuff like that. And this one guy that um, I've seen his name numerous times. And he's just a trail riding. He just loves trail riding, right. you know. And he's just put out the message like, "Hey, you know, if it's if it's not on a map and it's gated, stay off, and you know, pick up your trash." You know, right. it was a far longer paragraph, but <laughs> in short, that's really what the message was. What it came was. down to. And there was people arguing it. And really? Like they're like, "Oh, well, you know, those trails have been there a long time." And I'm like, "Well, and I'm just thinking, well, they may have been there a long time." But Tackett Creek has only really been open to the public mapped-wise and stuff like that probably four or five years. I mean, yes, it was... So it's still fairly new. It was ridden by the locals, and it may be locals that that don't like the gates. It may not be. I don't know. Um, Locals, they get offended when things happen. They don't take change well either. Well, everyone (laughs) takes offended when things happen, and if they're blamed, that's just you know right. nature and how it is but um you know it, it it's hard to say who's really doing it it doesn't really matter who's doing it no it doesn't matter who's you know it who commonly does it, it just don't do it like yeah and <laughs> we've, not we've had this conversation before with like the guys down in utah and moab and all that stuff where you know people do these obstacles and they don't even think about what's in their car and then when it falls out they don't take the time to even go even see if it's fallen out and uh pick up after themselves and then you know in like utah one of the biggest problems is that people defacing the rocks and you know the natural landmarks and all that it's like you're 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 lucky to even be there and the ability to take these machines over these things yeah why would you screw it up by carving your name into something that can't be replaced yeah riding off-road riding as a whole is a privilege yep it's truly a privilege. It, it's not owed to nobody. And the government can straight shut land down if they feel that it's not going the right direction. Private parks, same way. Like, you know what? It's it's going the wrong direction. We'll just shut it down. Right. Like, in, in all reality, reality, that the government, like, they don't need to open trail systems. They, they really don't. Um, they're doing it to to be friendly for everybody but they don't have to and private parks are kind of the same way i mean they they operate off of the off-road community but at the end of the day like they don't have to be open and i think we all all of us need to just remember that like it's a privilege to go out and ride for sure so yeah the 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 thing about like like private parks right you get connected to the community the people that work there yeah um and so you have this like moral obligation to be good to the park because you know the people doing it right and you go out to a public park you go to public lands and there's that that personal connection is not there and so people lose that sense of responsibility and the the important thing is that this is something that we all share together yeah you know that personal connection to that people that work that worked at that park it should be the same as the people that your tax dollars pay to maintain these trails and keep things yeah. open. And it, it and it's always on on the pages, whatever you read, it's always a back and forth. The outer towners say, oh, well, the, the locals caused that. And then the locals say, no, it's the outer towners that caused that. Right. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter who did it. Let's just try to be more friendly to the whole riding situation. Pick up your trash. Don't go where you're not supposed to go. That's a big thing. And just have fun. That's, that's a, all. That's a big thing that go... Don't go where you're not supposed to go. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that that one mistake could be a potential big repercussion down the line yeah. of, of not only local government, but yeah. that could have been private land. And then that yeah. landowner says no, and he's right in the middle of the trail. Yeah. You know, all sorts of different stuff. So, yeah. so like, we don't need to pass the blame game. It doesn't matter. It's no. irrelevant. It no. happened. 
fix it. Yeah. yeah. It's really that simple. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Just be good, do good, make the right choice, treat, treat it how you want it, if it was yours. Yeah. And, and, and just be the good person on it. You don't have to be the, the wild child of the group and, and prove to your buddy that you can do something. And, yeah. you know, that's a lot of times what it is, right? Like do, we, do, that on your own, <laughs> do that on your own property. And if you don't have property, we'll go get some and do it on your own. You know? <laughs> that's really that simple. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's, it's I don't think it's a lot to ask. Right. But sometimes it seems like it. Yeah. It's um, it's it's very strange. But going back to the nitro, so the, ra- the rally cross is going, um, starting mid end September. Nitro live oh, shows. The nitro live shows start here in about two weeks, and they've got thirty shows around the country. Thirty shows. Mm-hmm. Holy cow! And um, how many people are involved in those shows? I don't know what level of show this is. The big show, um, I think this is like kind of a mid-scale show. Still all the same stuff, just kind of shrunk down a little bit yep. for cost. Um, as far as like true employees of a show between backstage, in stage, all that kind of stuff, I bet there's over 60-something people. At 30 shows. <laughs> um, I mean, we shoot, we do this show here. We fly halfway, all the way across the country mm-hmm. to make this happen. And we have, you know, 12 people or whatever. I can't yeah. imagine. Plus, because we just fly ourselves with our bags. Like, when, there's not yeah. a trailer. There's not a, I mean, that's a lot of stuff yeah. and people and logistics. I think this show series, there's probably six semis. Really? Of stuff. Uh, ramps. Ramps and landings, equipment. Landings, vehicles. Bikes, contraptions, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, they contraptions. That's a special category. I like that category. Yes, <laughs> you got the tricycles, uh, the recliner, the rocking horse. You know all the stuff that goes down the ramp. Super cool. That's probably my favorite part. I mean, the freestyle is awesome, but to see those different little kind of contraptions and toys go flying through the air, that that's that's awesome to watch. It's always good to see a, a recliner go down a mega. Ramp. Oh yeah, that's that's amazing. But that starts here pretty soon, so that'll. Uh, what are what are some of the main uh, destinations for that? Uh, I know it's going to Nashville because I've had numerous people message me wanting tickets, and I have nothing to do with the live show. Uh, <laughs> so I, you can't get tickets no, from Hubert. Uh, <laughs> I I purely help Travis and take care of Pastrana Land, and I'm a personality for Nitro Circus when needed. That's where that's where I stand. <laughs> Hubert, like, <laughs> we always need you. Uh, well, I thank you, but I can't get your tickets. I don't. I'm sorry. Uh, it's funny. I actually sold a used set of tires to a guy back in the winter through Facebook Marketplace and never met the guy in my life. And That's um, a good way to meet celebrities. <laughs> we just yeah. go find out I where they're selling at, stuff. I met him at the local dealer and the tires had a couple hundred miles on but they were still in good shape. Uh, just didn't need them. You just broke them in. And uh, yeah. And I met him up there and uh, there's a lot of people that message me back and forth. They don't even look look it up. They just, right. okay, this is what I want. That's Some guy's fine. selling something. Some people um, recognize the name. recognize it. Some people don't. Whatever. And this guy, he rec- he recognized it, and I met him at the local dealership, and we traded our made our exchange, and uh, went on our way. Literally, maybe two weeks ago, shows coming near his house. Hey, man, I was gonna see if you can give me some tickets. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know you. I had to look back through our messages, and I'm like, I sold you a used set of tires. You had to figure out what, how this yeah. guy was. <laughs> yeah, I sold you a used set of tires, but now you want Nitro Circus tickets. Like, come on, man, really? And uh, I was like, man, I, I... You just need to fill out a disclaimer form, like, every time you interact with somebody. Please sign this, signature <laughs> yeah. that, and leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I, I get it. You know, it's cool, and it's fun, and all that kind of stuff. But, like, just to be honest, I have nothing to do with live shows. Um... I mean, if I wanted to go, I could call and, like, I could get there, but I can't bring other people. Like, that's did how they, they make did money. Did they give you, like, a 10% discount on the tickets getting in? You know what? <laughs> you know what's funny? I have to buy my clothes, like, nitro clothes and stuff like oh, that. Oh, because that's probably separate, right? It, well, it's the same but separate. It's the same because it has the name on it. Right. That's really about it. That's about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've sent a message. I said, hey, if you're sending some shirts and stuff like that, they're like, oh, we'll just... Uh, just here's a discount code right. and run it through the site, and then it'll go through. I'm uh, like, okay. We'll, we'll put you on the influencer program. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, you know, I, I went online and bought, like, four or five shirts that I thought were pretty cool. And, right. you know, it, it is what it, it is. It is what it is. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I, yeah, I, I could, being part of that. I, d- I just, I have, the, I think some of us 
that don't understand how this all works. It's like they, they envision Travis over there packing a shirt in a bag and putting the postage on it and shipping it out the door. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there may have been a time where that happened, but that's been a long time ago. There is because I do keep a a handful of his jerseys that they sell. Right. Like you can just buy his jersey. It won't be signed, but you'll right. you can buy it. Sometimes they'll announce they'll have him come through the office and they'll sign fifty of them. Right. So I keep. We we each have little lockers at the shop, so I'll keep ten or so in there, just for that case. Like gotcha. if he he'll hey man, do you, do you have a jersey I can sign? I need to send it to wherever. Right, because he's out there doing or, whatever he's doing. And they're not the exact jersey that was with his gear, but you know people love the jerseys, so. I, I do keep a couple for that kind of stuff, right. but it's not like they're just sitting around in boxes everywhere. <laughs> now, now, let's not lie. We know that you wear them around the house no. and in bed. And, no. And <laughs> no. I'm sure some people do. Not me. <laughs> I could care less. He's a, he's a great friend, a uh, great person to work with, but I'm not wearing his clothes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just want I just want Travis to come out with his own underwear and yeah. have his face there. <laughs> Ethica it does have like I think one ninety nine underwear or they did a limited oh. run. They had Valentino Rossi underwear. Oh and wow. They sent they sent it they sent it to all the people that they kinda work with and they right. sent one to the shop. And it was in like a pizza box with Valentino's <laughs> cartoon face on it. And I you know, open the box. I saw it, and I just I leave everything on the corner workbench that comes there for him, and he doesn't even check it half the time. I'm like, hey, look at this stuff. See if you want anything or throw it away or whatever. And uh, he looked at the pizza box. <laughs> he just like, he's like, and he just left it. He's like, I guess you don't want to wear another guy's face on you. Yeah. Especially on your underwear. Yeah. <laughs> that could come across a little strange, I think. Well, that's what makes it fun, right? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I guess. Uh, I got a lot of, okay. That's I'm, enough. So I got way too much injury. So injury I want to know, like, <laughs> I'm not an interweb surfer like you by no means. Like, I don't, pri- I probably only use, like, 20% of my, what my phone can really do. Like, social media, I Google, like, how to fix some things if I can't fix it, and I use text and call. Like, yep. that's really about all I use, you right. know, the calendar or something like that. But I, you must be some kind of internet connoisseur because you're pulling up these these patent photos and stuff like that <laughs> and these drawings. I don't know where you would even begin to find that kind of stuff. Like, are you you got an inside with like the patent office or something like that? Well, or? you know, I I I put a bug in the government office of patents, and uh, anytime they talk, I have I have Siri queued up to it, right? Okay. And anytime they say Polaris, Can Am, whatever, Siri tr- tells me, and then I go and listen in. That's what and I just do. the way they listen to us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You listen to them. Yep. But strictly on Power Sports I, UTV. Yeah. Yeah. They're listening to everything. Technology is amazing. You can, you can get down to, like, even the color of the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Green nice. UTV. Green and UTV. And then, and then Kawasaki pops up. Okay. Yep. okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I was kind of wondering how you found all these things. And uh, I guess being very technical, it, that helps. Yeah. You know, the, the amazing thing is that uh, we live in a country of uh, legalism. And so <laughs> and uh, and so there's processes to cover your butt on a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, there's, some side effect, there's some side effects to that. So. Legal until jailed that it's not <laughs> it's legal until it's not yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> i see your little drawings here and there and i'm like wow this this guy does his research yeah, like there's you know i'm i'm a curious guy and and really what it comes down to is passion oh i'm right you know with you. <laughs> like i a little kid who is into a video game hmm? right like let's just say the fortnite xbox whatever they're going to know everything about that, the characters' names, down to, like, the different colors and changes that they do over time. And, mm. and they're going to get excited about it. They're going to look forward to it. They're going to, you know, come press you to pay for the upgrade or whatever the case is. Uh, that's me, but in big-sized things. Like, I just get so excited, and I nerd out on these things, and I, and I want to know why the 2020 Can-Am RR is different from the Canon or R from the 2021 RR. Series. Like I want to know the difference. I want to yeah. know why. I want to know, and even to the point of, I want to know why the decision was made. Like that stuff just gets. I geek out on it. Like I, I want to know it all. And I and the thing is, is that my passion, while extreme, to some level, uh, to another person, is super super interesting and informative. 
And so that's what I'm trying to do is just translate that passion and information that other people otherwise would not have uh, about our industry that's essentially still birthing. Like it, we're, we're in, this, in this process of becoming, you know, an infant to a toddler. And, yeah. and this off-road industry of UTVs and, and ATVs and all that is really going through just a huge genesis of transformation. Um, and, and when it gets to that level, uh, like you take cars, for example, right? Like back in the day, people were super interested in cars. The, the old timers would build their hot rods and have a car club and, yeah. and all that nope. because they were super passionate about something. Yeah. They had, they went from, they get, came from back from war or they, or they were part of something and they needed to get an escape and then they got real passionate about it and yep. then they dove all in. Yep. And that's what's happening with off road now. And that's what's happened with me. And that's why I never want to have a desk job again, because I found that next thing. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and there's a lot of people that have that passion. They just don't know how to, they're not technically equipped. They're not, you know, uh, proficient in, you know, understanding how things come together and all that. And, and that really what it comes down to is I want to be able to know it myself, yeah. but then I want to help other people understand it. Yeah. And so I'm really looking forward to the next season of content that's going to be coming through my desk is that I'm really looking forward to this is a cool thing, whether yeah. that be an upgrade, a car, or whatever. Mm. Here's why it's interesting and why you should consider it when your next time you're going to buy. Yeah. And then let me show you what it's capable of. Yeah. So that's really exciting, and that's why I do what I do. And, and I'm not out to hurt people. I'm not out to, like, damage anybody's um, oh, reputation. Sure. Or, and, and there was a post a while back where it's like, you know, there, there, I may have let some photos out that may not have been supposed to have gotten out. And, and honestly, it, it, all truth, straight up, you know, that was a mistake by accident. Like it was, yeah. it was not intentional to be wrong in that situation. Yeah. Um, but uh, what it comes down to is the consumer is so hungry for this information mm. and yeah. there's nobody really providing a concise way of consuming that information. No, I mean, a hundred percent. And photos and stuff like that like the oems can say what they say and like oh it wasn't supposed to get out but somebody was, made it somebody was put it, it out there. Was, it, <laughs> was it secretly like a little nudge to get buzz right the the car companies do that yeah you know they'll they'll leak something vague whatever and then it'll disappear but it was enough to get people talking right no people get interested so you know who's to say no. So just so everybody that's, a, that's irrelevant. So everybody always says, "Well, they gave you that to post." It's like, no, that's not how it works. But at the same time, there is in the automotive world, there are some on-purpose mistakes yeah. that do happen. So uh, just for clarification, that's not what happened with me. It just, <laughs> anyways, it, it, it is what it is. But it, it's super interesting to where uh, to what's to come and yeah, because, and where it's going, right? Um, and I, I look at like the patents you were saying, like I look at the Yamaha patents that, that we found and the trailing arm upgrades and the shock upgrades and, you know, they're not going to come out with a dual shock, king shock, external bypass <laughs> setup like the patents show for the consumer. That's just yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. But it's super interesting. Oh, and for sure. And maybe they're, maybe they're um, just kind of blocking saving for future. Exactly. Well, I think um, what they're doing is they're they're trying to uh, protect their investments into their racing programs, into their athletes, into their their core business of um, generating performance parts and all that stuff. Right. Like you can't when you're at a, when you're corporate level, you have to protect every little dollar that you put into it. And that's yeah. how they do it. Yeah, It's far more than just build a machine and sell it. Um, there's way more into it than that on their levels, of course. Right. And, you know, funny, you go back to the patent thing right quick. So I grew up racing motocross and stuff like that. And then the I started racing roughly 2000 range. That's when I had the money to buy my own bike and, and kind of learned that racing isn't a club that you got to sign up for and hopefully they pick you. <laughs> it's just if you have the money in the bike and will pay for it, you can race. You can do it. It's really that simple. Uh, Early on, a Honda on their motocross bikes, they patented the routing of the front brake line. Oh, right. So it went from 
you know, master cylinder, straight down the fork, slid behind the fork, straight to the caliper. They patented the routing. So every other manufacturer had to take the brake line straight down the fork, under the fork, and then back up to the caliper. That was the common first thing, you know, people would change, but they were smart enough to like, no, we designed it, we own it. Right. And now, I mean, well, since then it's ran out, but you know, that's just what you're saying, protecting an idea and really right. capitalizing on it for as long as they possibly can. And I mean, it goes down to, and, and it can it can benefit, it can also harm. Yeah. And we look at some of the, the kerfluffle that's happened with like uh, the Gordon and Textron stuff and or Articat and, and some of these other things where that approach has gone a little bit too far mm -hmm. in its aggressiveness and has actually reduced the aftermarket. Yeah. It has reduced yeah. the uh, the dealer sales and it has reduced the yeah. actual consumption of that product. Yeah. Because there, I mean, I, I've, you know, had numerous conversations with, with Can-Am and, you know, just my thoughts on, you know, recreational and stuff like that. I, they've got professionals. But I'm also in in the field right. and deal with a lot of different people and stuff like that. And um, I have had a lot of conversations in that area right there. It's like you got to cater one area, even though you may not be comfortable. Right. To you kind of get them back because, I, like, I feel people buy a new machine or UTV. Um, for very, there's a, just a small list of reasons. Either their friends have it and they've seen what it'll do. It could, so they kind of go that route because they can share parts. Right. Just in case. Yep. And they may not drift a different way because either their friends don't have it or they've never messed with it or they never drove it. So, you know, that's why the experience like here where you can go and demo something. It, that's it's a, super cool because you actually, I mean, it's not like riding one all day, but you get a general feel of it. Like, okay, I, I kind of like this. I don't really like this. You know, that, you know. That's so. why I'm a big advocate for dealers that have test tracks or whatever yeah. in the back that they let you go ride on. Yeah, yeah they're not going to build you a jump. They're not going to build you a hill climb, but it at least gives you seat time to yeah. really actually start to hear the squeaks, feel the turn, see how it handles and, yeah. and get more familiar with it. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've shared that information and I'm sure they know that. In, in every way, uh, probably more technical than the way I say it. <laughs> but I'm like, you know, these are just the reasons that I feel people, you know, go a certain route with a machine. And I will say that, like, I've had numerous buddies swap to a Can-Am since they've drove one of my machines. Right. And I, I don't even say anything. I was like, all right, just drive it. Yeah. And your car's not, uh, like, a super custom build or anything. No, I mean, my Hammer's car is built safety spec wise and tougher but the rest of the cars are they're stock with bolt-on stuff right uh like roof and bumpers and you know shock therapy spring kit and stuff like that but you know they're they're stock cars and the first usually the first thing is like oh well i don't you know i, I can't see and uncle well stop 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 i was like all right let's just think about this for a minute it's like you're sitting in a sports car you look across the hood right and as like you sit in other ones and you're a little more sitting upright, so you're kind of looking down on the hood. I was like, but if we pulled a tape measure, you're literally probably only losing about a foot of clearance, of truly visual clearance. You shouldn't be looking right there anyways. <laughs> you should be looking five, eight, 10, you know, 20, 100 feet out. Rock crawling, I get it. You're trying to see a little bit further. It doesn't matter if you could see right in front of the bumper. It's not going to change how you're driving. Right. I mean, it'll help you move your tires, but you just need to focus a little bit further. When it's I just a different style. Yeah. And so when I explain that, they're like, oh, well, well you're right. That kind of makes sense. Then they'll go out and drive it. And I was like, all right, before you even drive, just pay attention to how it leaves. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of hinting on the things that I think they accelerate in. Right. And, um they'll go out and drive and they come back and they they give usually pretty positive feedback like i, I really like this i like this I, I don't really know about this i'd probably have to grow on me but it's just try yeah you know and that's why the demo program is so great with i mean and all the manufacturers do it you just have to find where they're going to be at where they're going to be at and unfortunately they're not all 
like super gung ho to go to every show and not every show can handle all the OEs. Yeah. So it is it is kind of a, a, a game of, of chicken of trying to figure out where they're going to be and, and where you can get to and and all that. But like, you know, you, you come here and, and a lot of people say, you know, this car is not as fast, not as powerful, whatever the case is, you know, and then, but you don't really know how that applies until you can go to an event like this yeah. and realize you don't need 200 horsepower to ride a trail. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and you don't necessarily need 72 inches. A 64 yeah. might do even better. Yeah. And I, I actually, 90% of the time I prefer a 64. And when the 64s first came out, like in 2014, that thing's way too big. That ain't going to fit anywhere. <laughs> so That's twice as wide as my 800. Yeah, yeah. that's way wider than my four-wheeler. So, I mean, we all adapt, of course. Right. But it's, it's, it's super awesome to see OEMs out there trying and, you know, people actually get a chance to try everything. Because, like, I've drove all the brands over the years right and they all have their goods and they all have their it might not agree with you the best right you know you, you pick what you like um and that's why i like events like this one like to take over events because not only are you here to go see the vendors you're at a destination mm -hmm. and you're here you're able to go ride and, and and actually experience something new and different and fresh or whatever or even if it's even if you're a local it's a different experience when you have hundreds of other buddies to do it with yeah and uh this isn't just a a, a horse corral or something with a bunch of vendors in it <laughs> yeah. right like you don't just drive up no, it, walk it, around it, and go home it's straight mountainside it's like you can <laughs> ride for you know, hundreds of miles and, yep. and make a, a massive loop. And we're actually going to do that today. I have I put out a post. You helped me put out a post. We're going to meet, you know, in the vendor area, Super ATV area, and probably leave here probably around like 11 o'clock or so and um, probably get with some local guys. I mean, I have GPS of, you know, all of the area, but I don't know what's good and what's not because right. I haven't never been here. Right. So uh, work with some of the guys you work with. Get a get a good guy that'll you know get us on a good loop yep. and hopefully we can get out away from the dust. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, the lead car will get away from well, the dust. Okay. <laughs> I'm normally leader and I never really feel the dust, but well, I don't see, we think just that's going to happen today. We just need you to lead the group ride in a water truck. So like we just need that. to get an off-road water truck. Yeah. That, get some that. baffling in the water and, and get that thing off-road. I, I had a guy over there tell me the other day that they they saw something on YouTube something overseas to where it was incredibly dry so they sent drones up to dump water no they sent drones up and some kind of did some kind of electric current shock and created a downpour rain what i don't know how true that is hmm. but your tech your internet <laughs> you need to find this out because if that's true why is it so dusty? <laughs> we, we just start creating lightning storms with drones, and we'll, we'll make but it happen. That, I mean, they were 100% like real on. I'm like, I, I'm not saying you're a liar, but I'm saying I don't, <laughs> I'm saying that's kind of questionable <laughs> at best. It's a very imaginative story you've just told. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't think a drone would go high enough. But, you know. <laughs> well, the FAA whatever. might disagree with you on that one. <laughs> well, yeah. They're, they're all over if you go more than 300 feet. Yeah. Well, shoot. Yeah. 10 feet in some areas. Yeah. Um, all right. So you got your ride here. You got some more rides coming up. Where are you going and what kind of, where can people meet you to go ride with you? So I've. I'm almost positive I'm coming to take over out in southern Utah. Yeah. Come see you all again. Uh, I've heard that's an amazing event. I've been to the location. Awesome, awesome riding. You know, a wide range of riding. But I've heard the event is like next, Stellar. next level. Yeah. Like, yeah. They've never seen anything like it over there. Like incredible amounts of people. We had a, the first year we were there was last year. Okay. No advertising, no real pushes, no nothing, and it was already as big as one of our biggest events. So this year, with how much we're covering and doing, how much coverage I'm doing, and how much we're putting out there, and how big, we've already doubled Oregon, we've already doubled this one mm -hmm. uh, in Virginia, uh, Oklahoma is expected to be a double, and Hurricane is is going to more than likely be more than double. Jeez. They they actually expanded the parking lot where it's normally a loadout parking lot. Yeah. They almost doubled it. And some of that motivation was, holy cow, look how many people we can get here. And so vendor rows going to be almost twice as big. And it was already huge. 
and you have the lake there you can go recreate at you have the beach you have you know uh, slick rock to go crawl you have sand, red sand who goes who gets to go ride red sand every day yeah except for the people that live there yeah uh and uh you got the epic views over i mean it's just an amazing place and you oh. can any type of riding you want it's there by far it is an amazing place so uh so you're basically telling me that I've already missed out on every camp spot within a 40-minute drive. Camp, I, I found out <laughs> I found out this week that we sold out of camping, and that place is huge for camping. Like, there's tons of camping space, and we sold it out. Well, I guess I should have decided a little bit earlier. We'll, we'll, get, <laughs> we'll get you a spot somewhere. We'll just park on the side of the road and camp. There's, there's this area over by the side of the road with some dumpsters and stuff. There's a good spot right behind there. I mean, whatever. <laughs> That's what it takes. Uh, so definitely, you know, try my hardest to get out there the yep. following weekend is um glamis hollow halloween weekend halloween yeah which is you know basically the launch of dune season so if i'm out west might as well drift on down there yep. um see what's going on see if there's any new launches or anyone's launching any big dunes and you know definitely uh probably go see that while i'm out there that'll rally cross will be the following month so might go try to ride johnson valley or something like that get get some yeah. really early king of the hammer <laughs> <laughs> we were talking before about how uh how if you go to if you want to go ride that area you really have to like dirt <laughs> yeah oh, you, you do like if people up here really like mud yeah down there you really have to like dust and dirt <laughs> yeah so uh i know brimstone park in east tennessee they are going to have their um fall event I think they'll release dates. I'm working with them on some, some other projects. Um, they're going to release dates probably next week or so. Okay. Uh, once that releases, I'll, I'll for sure be there, You're part good. of that. Yeah. So that's that's three. This is four. We'll probably put together some other rides if I'm driving back and forth across the country, trying to pick something new. I'd love to go hit Texas. I was going to say, um, there wasn't on the, the little animation or something, wasn't there something down central? Uh, that's just a cartoon. Like, that's, <laughs> just because there's a dot there doesn't mean I'm going Just because it looks like a map doesn't mean it's an accurate yeah, map. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a map, but that that you can't pinpoint me to that location. Uh, I'd love to stop through Texas and hit some of the parks down there. Uh, there's the Uncharted um, playgrounds and society parks, which Uncharted is... Uh, Can Am's kind of adventure portion, okay, of um, of riding. Whether it's they've been developing that a little bit more yeah. lately too. And it's um, it's the I think the society side of it is like outfitters where you can meet up with people that are guides and might have some vehicles you drive. And you know, if you don't have it and you're trying to get into it, um, and then the playgrounds are actually like parks, but they do have a, a fleet there that you could possibly rent if you need or whatever. So I definitely like to go connect with some of those um i'd love to go hit the ozarks and stuff like that i went through there when i went across country but that was in 17 yeah uh there's amazing riding there it's just amazing riding everywhere it's it's just hard to hit it all because usually there's a goal to get somewhere <laughs> and there's usually a time frame of like okay i'm leaving maryland the events in utah it takes me exactly 40 hours to get there so I have 45 hours to get there. Right. <laughs> and so it's hard to make time to, to drive in between. Yeah. So I might need to find a driver. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's always a good time to get out and ride, especially with people that you don't know, and, and especially people that have a certain skill set that you don't have and yeah. can show you what's capable of your machine yeah. and, and do it safely yeah. uh, with some actual, like, thought put behind it. And yeah. Yeah. Any, like, anyone that... You know, I post online of when when I'm going to ride and where, and everyone's invited to come ride. Uh, you got to have your own machines. I can't provide machines for everybody. <laughs> Let's be clear. He's not bringing a Can-Am fleet with I, him. <laughs> I'm not providing a passenger seat or an extra machine for, you know, the public. That's just not how it works. But if you want to come ride, you know, come experience a ride with me and all that kind of stuff, awesome. I'd, I'd love to have everybody. If you have any questions, just ask. Uh, from time to time, people see my machine, and they'll ask questions and just get some true insight. Um, I work with numerous companies, but I'm going to be honest, like whether kind of where the certain item fits. Right. Um, it fits what I'm doing. Right. It may not fit what everybody's doing. You know, not um, everybody needs portals. Not, <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people need them. Some people don't. You know, some people 
need heavier axles or better spring kits. Some people don't. Uh, a very common question is like, oh, what about a frame brace kit? And a guy actually asked me, asked me yesterday, he's like, oh, my, my, my X3, it's got like 3,000 miles on it now. And I'm like, yeah, man, so you've been trucking. That's awesome. And uh, he's like, yeah, I think I'm kind of up for, you know, I probably need a shock rebuild and some springs. And I was like, oh, well, you know, look into shock therapy or, or, you know, whoever you feel you need. I was like, they have a really easy website, you know, to, to get the right spring rates and stuff. And he's like, yeah, I'm really looking into that. And I kind of looked at his shocks, and I was like, well, if you bumped them crossovers up like three inches, I was like, it'll ride better. I was like, you're riding on the big spring the whole time. Right. I was like, you know, that'll give you a little plusher ride. And he's like, oh, yeah, for sure. I'll definitely I'll definitely look into that. And he's like, he's like let me ask you, um, do you need a frame brace kit? I was like, well, how do you ride? I was like, you've got 3,000 miles on the thing, and it doesn't look like it's been rolled yet. So <laughs> how do you truly ride? He's like, well. We like to, you know, we're from around here. We like to go ride like 100 miles a day. I said, man, I'm right there with you. I love that kind of stuff. I said, do you just beat on it and bash on it and, you know, run through the trees and hit stuff if it's in the way? And do you climb hills and cartwheel? And he's like, no, no. He said, we just like to ride. I was like, well, you may not need it. Right. I was like, I have it on there because I'm a, I'm a cautious rider. I know how to keep my machine together. But just like but every in, once in a while, but just just like the video in, in in Utah with Dustin Jones, if there's a lot of camera around and something needs to be tried, well, we're going to try it. Like Some, sometimes the show just needs to go on. Yeah, sometimes you got to put on a good show, so we brace for that. Um, he was like, so I was like, man, I can tell you firsthand, there's thousands and thousands of those machines out there completely stock and never have an issue yeah i was like so you never hear about the car that doesn't have issues i was like so just take that information for what it is and he was like thank you fair yep. enough yeah because you you've got all our buddies like just stressing on you like oh you gotta have a cage you gotta have this you gotta have this and i'm like well you just spent thirty thousand dollars on a machine and your buddies are talking you into spending another 15 yeah i was like if that's what you want to spend, I mean, if you funny. got it, let's do it. Hey, but. I mean, let her roll. But I mean, not everybody's got that just laying around. Right. So, you know, just be mindful on what what are you really going to use, and what are you not going to use. Right. And you know. And 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 to certain components, just having peace of mind is worth it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if 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 having a, a, a gusset kit is worth it to you, if by it, all means. If it makes you feel better. Yep. Fine. But the Smart Shocks machine I have here. Um, I had a guy come up. He's like, "Man, this thing's decked out," and I'm like, "It's just bolt-on stuff, there's some, man." There's some cool stickers on it. I mean, it's got cool stickers for sure, <laughs> and they, it's got awesome. They add horsepower. It's got awesome products. I said, "But it, it's bolt-on stuff." I said, you, "Anybody can get this stuff." He's like, "He's like, oh, but it's set up real well." And uh, he's like, "Look at those arms." I was like, "Those are stock arms." <laughs> he's like, "What?" I was like, "I plated the bottom of them because I have access to that. I plated them and I run a crossbar in them. I put the skid plate back on." He's like, "Oh." I was like, this car has been fully through King of the Hammers. That was what I pre-ran the whole course with. I put it through everything. I said, I did it at a cautious scale right. just to see stuff. You mean you don't, like, you don't, you don't pre-run at race pace? Not always. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, because you're a long ways away from the truck. That's purely why. That's the only reason. But, you know, it's been through all that stuff, and it made it just fine. So that's like... You, if you know how to treat it, it'll get there. I said the race car, yes, it takes more of a beating. You know, we hit everything faster, and like, cause, but just like that, that security of like, I've done all these heavier things. I know what it'll take. I can bash through there a little bit harder and know it'll be all right. Right. So. Well, uh, folks, if you're you're looking at to go to any of the shows this year, check out, see if Roland's going to be there, and um, you might be able to go out for a ride with him and rip and see what he's all about, and uh, maybe rally with him a little bit and push him up to the front. I'd, I'd say the biggest thing I get is uh, people have a, a slight fear to ride with me because of who I'm involved with, <laughs> uh, Nitro and, and Travis and all that kind of stuff, and you know, action sports and, and whatever, big stunts. Um, we're not doing that on the trails, all right? Let me just be clear. <laughs> like, I, I'm not out there running 60 miles an hour through the woods and hitting everything as fast as I possibly can and, and, <laughs> and forcing people to do hill climbs that they don't want to do. I'm not doing that. We're just riding trails and seeing stuff. I mean, yes, we cover a lot of ground. I don't stop a lot. I just want to see stuff. Right. Um, but I'm not going insanely fast. And so it's not the 530 Club, but it's also not 
you know, 100% rally. It's not racing, but yes, it's not ride five and, <laughs> and stop and take pictures and socialize for 30. So. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, once again, we're at UTV Takeover, uh, Grundy, Virginia. It's going off. Uh, today's the last day. We're going to see uh, uh, some side-by-side racing, um, and then we're going to see Hill Fest, which is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, see a lot of guys uh, try to try to make it up as fast as they possibly can and, and get around a tree and some other stuff. Uh, we had mud bogs yesterday. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I've uh, seen flamingos out there. There was. There was some flamingos like out there. plastic flamingos just floating around. We thought about getting bigger ones for you when you showed up, but uh, we couldn't find them in time. I was looking for a gator. <laughs> there was some interest. It was funny watching the guys. I mean, I'm not from the south, and I'm not used to the mud scene and, you know, all yeah. that, but I thought it was purely entertaining watching the, the frogs jump back into the water as they get splashed out of the water. <laughs> yes. I thought it was more entertaining that, like, you got your ones that are mud machines. Like, they put the tires yep. on a little bit of snorkels. Yep. And then you got guys in fully stock machines. There's this guy that raced a little 12, course. 8, 12, 14 inches of clearance on 29. Oh, man. There's this one guy that raced the course. He was on a 64-inch X3. Yep. On the rally course? Yeah. Spare tire. Yep. Run the whole rally course. Did great. Uh, moved on pretty quick. Then I looked down, and he's lined up for the mud ball. <laughs> he's like, I'm here for everything. What, Whatever you got, I'm doing it. I'm here for all. All the and things. he won a couple rounds. Yeah. And, like, stock tires and everything. And yep. I'm like, <laughs> the best part about him, he had a flip windshield. He cleaned his windshield. Every pass, they'd go over there and clean it. And right as he pulled up to the line, he pulled the windshield down. Yep. He'd take off. As soon as that initial splash, he'd knock the windshield out of the way, and he's keep on trucking. Oh, there you go, bro. I mean, super smart. Like, yeah. Almost like tear-offs. But like he's just, been thinking right, about, we're going. He's been thinking about that all year. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, precision driving, always got vision, and smart dude. And yeah. the, that little completely stock X3, I mean, it took a beating, but it, it hurt some people's feelings. It was pretty <laughs> impressive. That's the thing about the you know racing of any type, right? Like, yeah. you go into it fully prepared, expecting to dominate, and some guy... As long yep. as he's got the skill and, the, and he's got the timing. There's always that sleeper over there in the corner that's got <laughs> just enough to look like he's barely getting by and then just hurts your feelings like, man, I, hey, when I you, wasn't that collected. When you get to 50 miles an hour, it's the same 50 miles an hour you're driving. Yeah. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter how you get there. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, thanks for joining me. Uh, thanks and for thank coming on down. Much. And I uh, hope you have a great day riding. I wish I could be out there. I was in a, a slight car accident last Friday. and, and, yeah, and so. And not feeling too good, so the, the harnesses feel pretty bad when I'm bumping well, around. But uh, Maybe Utah. Maybe, well, yeah, we'll see. I really do want to get out and, and film some of that riding mm -hmm. out in Utah uh, sure. this year, and so we'll have to do some of that. Uh, but uh, you can find the podcast on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Apple, iTunes, all that stuff. Uh, you can find us on, um, you can find UTV Takeover at utvtakeover.com, uh, all the places like that. Where can we find you, where you're doing, and what you're doing with Canada? Uh, all my social pages are at Nitro Redneck, R E D N E K Hubert. Uh, that's Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I have a, a website at hubertracks.com, and uh, but mostly it's all social media type stuff. So if I'm doing it and I want people part of it, it'll be out there. So if you want to ride with him, uh, follow his social pages. Uh, he'll be posting there the dates and locations. Uh, and sometimes locations like this just pop up. And yep. so if you're not following him, you won't know about it. So if you want to keep track of things and have a good time, uh, go uh, like and subscribe and do all that stuff. And as uh, what were the influencers, what did they do? They, um, smash the subscribe button <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and get that done and uh, have a good time. So until the next time, guys, peace.